This tutorial is going to go through making custom maps using My Maps, only this time we're going to be adding um, information and a new layer using a Google Form. So I've been working on this series of, uh, with this map. It's a collaborative class map to use with students of all ages. They can add their favorite places to a town. So far we're working on the layer called Historic Landmarks and Buildings. Now I want to add a layer uh, that is um, about favorite places to play. Only I'm thinking that maybe people don't know the exact location. They might just know uh, the name of the park or the um, sports field or a business, but they don't know quite where it is on the map. So this is a great trick to be able to do. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer. And I can title this layer right now before I forget. I'm going to call this Best Places to Play. Unpleasant. And I'll save that. And notice that the import button pops up right away when you add a new layer. So I'm going to click on import. But before I do that, I should tell you what I had to do ahead of time. I created a Google form about uh, to send to people about the best places to play. And on that form, it was very simple. I put the location's name and the city and state. Now I know that it's um, everyone knows that this map is about Pleasant in California, but that's needed to fill in um, to populate these places. And then I wanted to add some detail. What is it that you like to do there? And then the person's name. And when they submit that, um, I will be able to gather that information from um, a spreadsheet. And I'll show you how to do that. So once that form is completed by all the participants, I want to click on import. I've only done a sampling of a couple of people that I got to answer my form. But when you go to import, I want you to open your Google Drive and scroll and find the, um, the spreadsheet uh, answers. I know it's this one right here, best places to play in Pleasanton. And it is the responses. Now I've um, opened that up. It's connecting. It's fetching it. So the first thing I need to do now uh, is choose the columns to position my place marks. So I want to place it by location name and city and state. So that's going to put the place mark um, in the correct location. And then I'll click continue. Next I need to pick a column to use as the title place marks, such as the name of the location or person. Now I could put the person's name, but I'm thinking that, um, oh, location name is, is not available. I can always maybe go back and change that. I'm going to put the person's name and then I'll finish and hopefully it will populate very quickly. It's going to give me a new map. All right, here it comes. And it's given me two locations, two new locations on here that are in red. And if I click on it, I can see the first person to fill this out. It said that Orloff Park, play basketball with my friends after school. If I want to edit that, I can click Edit. And I can change any of this that I want. I can actually take uh, Ben's name off here, and I might want to put Orloff Park now, so that people can just click directly on that. I also might want to take off the timestamp, and maybe I can put in um, uh, the then created this entry right here. You can also add more detail about what you like to do in that location. Uh, I can also at this time I can add images um, the same way that uh, we were doing before. I can search for Olaf Park, Pleasanton, California and let's see what shows up. Yep, this is Olaf Park and here are the basketball courts. Perfect. So I want to save this and now you can see that when I click on the place marker it shows that it's I messed up there. It shows that it's Orloff Park at that location. So that's good. You can go in and edit. Now you're going to see here that I have two rows couldn't be shown on the map and I can fix the errors in the highlighted uh, table. So what's going on is that I've done something incorrectly in my table. 
Now, if I click on the data, it's really great because the spreadsheet data actually pops up right here. And I can see that I've included the wrong name was put in. So it's not Amador High School, it's Amador Valley High School. So let's see if I just change that now, if that will correct it. I put in the correct name, I'm going to click away, and there it is. It added it immediately. So it's Grant, and he's changed uh, the location, and uh, play football with the Dons on Friday nights. Again, you can change, uh, edit this, and um, change the, um, uh, the location name. And then when you're finished, just click Save. I could add pictures there as well. Now, you can see that I have both layers showing right now. I can dismiss that. I fixed it. Um, I have both layers showing right now, but if I only wanted to show best places to play in Pleasanton, I could uncheck this box, and only the red markers show up. If I wanted to go back and see historic landmarks and buildings, I can check that box, maybe take off best places to play. That way I don't have too many items on my map at one time. And if I uncheck everything, it kind of makes this little section compact. You can keep adding many layers, um, and then be able to share it. Just make sure that your share settings are set to view only.